record on this computer. I'm going to talk a bit about assignment five first, right? I got a number of emails saying, hey, I need more time, which is understandable. This, you know, uh, this, I don't know, time arc saga epoch is a mess. You know, everything since 2000 has kind of just smeared together into one big mess of, of timelessness. So, yeah. Again, it. Hopefully, things should be resuming kind of a normalcy in the fall, considering that by fall, you know, vaccinations for children under five and under will be, or children under five will be available. But for right now, you know, we have to deal, we have to just deal with things as they are. Okay. So module, so let's see, what was the due date for this one? So, it was due, so it's due today. Let me go ahead and edit, edit the due date. I'm gonna make it due a couple days later because, so let's go ahead and make it due by end of day Saturday. Sorry for those of you who worked really hard to finish it by now, but notify users that this content has changed. All right, and now me solving, I see no reason to change that due date yet. All right, so let me talk, but regardless, I need to move on and talk about the next assignment, okay? The next assignment, of course, being May solving, let's go ahead and download May's, May's grid panel and, and cell.java. Let's do, and let me boot up IntelliJ. All right. So, what we've got here is uh, May solving. Now, May solving is a really awesome kind of uh, how to say sub kind of its own like little sub genre of algorithms. Um, in fact, if you go into into Wikipedia again, like I love Wikipedia when it comes to computer science algorithms because they're really good. Maze generation algorithm. Part of that is because since Wikipedia is a different kind of resource than other resources you might see, it. They, they, there were no restrictions on what you could put on on things. So here's a mate. So there's two kinds of algorithms: maze generation algorithms, which are algorithms for making mazes. Okay. Um, using different out, you know, uh, different methods. So here's one using a uh, random diff for search, and you can see it is basically creating a random path that winds. And what it's doing is kind of digging out trenches and the blue area is where it's backtracking to basically say, I'm going backwards because I hit a dead end. And so then it has to continue and find the exit, which it did there. And now it's just filling or the entrance is now filling in. And now we've got ourselves a maze where we can just put the entrance and exit where we need to be. Okay. Um, it's that doing, so, implementing this is the extra credit, by the way, the, um, the maze generation. Um, those maze generation algorithms are close, are, are each maze generation algorithm creates its own bias. For instance, this is a recursive maze generation where basically it splits it into boxes, splits it in half, and then it looks at each half and splits that in half. And as you can see, that kind of generates a, um, how to say, doesn't, it generates like a very grid-like maze, right? And when it splits it in half, it puts a, it, it has one opening between those halves. So it creates a solvable maze, but it has these really grid-like thing. Whereas uh, this creates really windy passages. I, I created a really dumb algorithm for making a maze, which simply um, which simply uh, breaks stuff apart. Uh, sorry, which simply well, I'll show you. Um, 
it generates a very easy to solve and very easy to understand um, kind of thing, maze. Oh, okay. Uh, close, pro apparently I have that. Because of course I've done this class multiple times. So of course I'll have a maze project. Yay, okay. So here we go. So this is the maze, and this is what happens when you run the maze. Although I've changed it to be 50 by 50. Um, a size 50 by 50 on maze. So let me go ahead and make that a bit smaller to, um, to do that, okay? And yes, I apparently did write some kind of code to help students get started have to terminate that because you've got, so here we go. So what we generate here is this maze that had, that if you look at it, it's got basically this kind of diagonally falling passages. Um, this is because the maze generation algorithm works like so. Um, it works like so. I generate the maze by looking at so basically what I've got here is I've got my same model view. I've got my, my, what I've got here is I've got this frame, okay? This window. And inside the window, this kind, so we've got this frame, which is the border, which I can move like this, and it's got the buttons. Inside that is a, so that's the main, the maze class. Inside that is the maze grid panel, which is the, the actual maze itself. Now it's called a maze grid panel because it's a grid, it's a it's a panel, specifically a grid panel, which is useful for when you're making, you know, a grid of things. And here each item in each, so each space, each square in the maze is just, is what I call a cell. Each cell has four Boolean values uh, representing whether or not it has a wall. So here for this square over here, we've got a north wall. It, it, it's true on the north wall true on the east wall, false on the west wall, and south on the, uh, and south on the, sorry, and false on the south wall. Below it, by the way, the square to the south of it has a false on the, on its north wall, by the way. So keep that in mind if you're doing the extra credit where you're going to have to remove the walls. And what you see here, the way I, I do this, to generate this, right, I've got this internally, it's represented by a, by a cell, right? An array of uh, cells. And to generate this maze, which I call Northwest maze, basically I iterate through every single cell, okay? Um, if it's the corner, I don't bother with it. If we're on the top row, I just simply remove all of the, I simply remove all of the walls on the top row, right? Notice how the top row doesn't have any walls on it. And the top and the bottom and the left column doesn't have any rows on this. So you can, that way we don't get into a weird dead end kind of situation, right? That's what goes there. Otherwise, um, I have this Boolean as where I essentially flip a coin, right? If math.random is less than or equal to 0.5. If north, and basically I'm saying whether do I want to remove the, for each square, I choose what randomly whether to remove the north wall or the my north wall or my west wall. If it's my north wall, I remove my north wall and I tell the guy, the cell above me to remove his south wall. Otherwise, if I have to remove my west fall wall, I do so by remove by setting that to false and telling the guy to, to the west of me to remove their wall. Okay, that's the generation algorithm. So the way what happens when you run this. When you build the maze grid panel, which is what's called by this, we build something with a certain number of rows and columns. It creates this. Um, it does all this fancy stuff for you. It generates the maze and then it calls solve maze, which is your homework, okay? So here I've got a, and this is what I provided for you already, which is basically I provide you with um, a stack to start with, a cell, in the top left corner. And then I've got, and basically your goal is to go from this corner over here to this corner over there. I also provided you with a, a visited method, which tells you whether or not you visited a, 
a space. Now, why is this important? Well, there's really two ways to solve a maze, okay? At the end of the day. So the first and the foremost is called the left, is called the right hand rule or the left hand rule, depending on which hand you're using, which is when you enter a maze, immediately slap your hand against the wall, okay? And don't let go. And then just simply follow, and this basically it works like this, right? Yeah, enter the maze and you hold on to it and keep going until, until you can exit. Make sense? You just simply keep your hand, uh, keep it on the wall. This will solve a great number of mazes uh, so long as the entrance and the exit are connected by a wall, okay? Cases where this may not work are if you are in kind of a weird circular labyrinth scenario where the exit is like an elevator in the center of the maze or something, okay? That's where it can kind of fail. Speaking of labyrinth, the other way to solve pretty much any other maze is to do what These Theseus, I believe, did in the labyrinth when he was uh, going in to slay the Minotaur, okay? Um, now, I should note with a caveat that this doesn't necessarily solve all mazes. Like if the maze is gonna reconfigure itself and you're kind of need a, in need of a new algorithm. But for the most standard mazes that aren't going to be magically shape shifting on you, or you aren't working in some, a maze that has four dimensions, might still work for four dimensions for those weird, uh, weird video games that play with dimensions. Love those games that, um, you know, for instance, where you're where where you are change or where how you're moving through the maze that changes how you have to approach it. Um, I can show that game off at some point if I remember what it is, but. Um, let's go to back to Theseus for a second, right? As you may have seen in my video. Or labyr labyrinth, the Greek labyrinth, right? Right, so Theseus and the Minotaur's labyrinth. And you'll notice that clutch, here's the Minotaur, here's Theseus and clutched in his hand in this beautiful high resolution scan is Ariadna's thread thread given to him by, by Ariadna, okay? And as you can see, it's, you can see the line drawn. And basically the idea here is that he's got this thread that basically if he runs into a dead end, he can back up and try it. Now, this isn't necessarily the best idea because how do you keep track of where you were? That's why what you wanted, but he's got a sword, so I suppose he could make marks on the wall, so that helps him. So basically what you need to do is, is have some, we can emulate this by having like some chalk, right? As you're going down, you might use one color of chalk to indicate this is a path I have traveled, okay? And then if you hit a dead end somehow, then you use the other piece of chalk to color, when we're, uh, to color your way back as you're following, right? Saying, hey, I've been this way, and that denotes, hey, I've been on this path before, it leads to a dead end. Don't bother following this path. Make sense? And so when you back up to a point where you can make a new choice, like a different corridor over here, you can make that. And you can emulate, Theseus could easily emulate that by like by the backing up using this, and then he can mark the dead ends with his sword, right? It's not, I mean, like, I mean, we see plants growing, so that's obviously dirt, right? Some weird looking plants there. Um, okay, so the point being is that there are a ton of ways to, there are ways to do this, but that algorithm in general is what we call a def first search algorithm, and it's described in this document. I give you the pseudocode for it over here, where we start with our position on top of the stack. The, the position, this top of the stack, which is analogous to the head of the linked list, that indicates where we currently are. Well, maze exploration. I love my misspelling, is not done and the stack isn't empty. This part, I would actually figure out the ending condition, leave that for last, which I'm showing you. We peak to get our current position. And then we kind of hit a decision tree. If you can, if we can go north and haven't visited there yet, how do I know if I can go north? Using, if, if there's a wall there, right? We use the wall to figure out whether, what direction we can go. If I can go north, 
and I haven't visited there yet. Then we, what we do is that we, we say we want to move to that location. To do that, I push that location onto the stack. So now it's the top of the stacks to indicate that's where I am. And I mark the current location as visited. How do I mark the current location as visited? Well, I kind of give an idea of how to do that in this code. So rather than a, for, uh, a while loop to say run until the code is empty or code until we can get to the end of the maze, what I do over here is say for in i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. So this loop runs 10 times. This is a good starting place to put with rather than, rather than the while loop. Um, I get the current location and where I am is blue. And I say, hey, I uh, I'm going to mark where I am with a color. So current .set background to blue. I can mark it whatever I want, by the way, to make it green or some other color. There's a bunch of built-in colors, or you can give it a, 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 you know, a custom color combination. And what I do is that if I want to move south, sorry, to move south, what I do is I say stack.push maze current.row plus one current.column. So my current position, right? Where I, so the current is the cell I'm currently at. It stores every cell stores its location. So to go down, I just simply say I'd like to go to I uh, push the cell that is to the south of me. Now, for those of you who forget who now remember arrays, this is zero zero, right? This is zero one. Uh, no wait, this is one zero one. Uh, two zero three zero. Whereas if I'm going south, I add one. So this is zero one zero two zero three zero four, right? So I'm so going down means adding one. In all computers are basically working in that quadrants. What is it? Four of the x y plane, where basically the x is positive but the y's are negative. So, uh. And that's because we like to measure from the because of the way arrays are just graphically represented. Where the so the top so and this works for your pixels as well. The top left pixel is zero zero. Um. So. Yeah. So anyway, what I so here I do that now. If I wanted to back up. Now, if I have to backtrack, how does that work? Well, repeat for south and west, and then the else. We can't go anywhere else, so we're at a dead end, and we mark the current as a dead end. So if I wanted to mark as a dead end, what I would do is I would mark the current space with a different color, like gray or something. And then I would pop off the stack to back up. And then from that cell, I can check, okay, can I go northwest, south, you know, northeast, south, or west? And if I can't, or I visited all those locations already, I'll back up again. And keep popping until I get to a location where I can go. Um, the um, the correct path will be like a di will be like a diagonal path, like I believe. Let's see. Yeah, it's right here. This is the correct path through the maze. It's just a path like this because just because of it. So a correct answer will basically be the a blue kind of path that going a bit down and diagonal and below that should be a bunch of gray area you know depending on what order you choose to go through but if you're checking north first and then and the like then you you you'll if you're choosing to go down first you'll you'll find different ways of doing it it's it's fine but point being is that you're going to end up like with a triangle with like half the with half the graph like gone sorry half the maze like gone through and grayed out so that's fine um now um right so the is and so last thing the way the is visit the visited works you give it a row column it looks up where that cell and then gets this the color of that cell if it's white it's unvisited if it's red it's also unvisited why red red is what what is used for the um for the end, ending space. The ending space is red. That's how you know you're at the ending space, right? Makes sense. So if you so it returns false on a white or red, but otherwise, if you've changed the color of it, then you've been there. That is how you know whether you visited or not. Okay. So changing it to anything other than white or red will work. 
Any questions on this one? The extra credit is to finish this up, uh, generate a DFS maze, okay? Where you generate a rat, where you basically, instead of doing the Northwest maze, you do something like the maze generation algorithm. Um, this, by the way, over here, um, think lab, this website is great about talking about different ways to make mazes. It's, and then this one is a presentation, uh, which goes on about how mazes are great practice on figuring out algorithms and goes into the different algorithms you can use to make mazes. Um, it's very good. Um, anyway, maze solving algorithms, right? You can find that, that detailed here. Um, and you can find, ooh, they've changed it up. Recursive algorithm. So oh, they used to have the, uh, the algorithm I had in here, but now they wanted just a recursive algorithm, which is similar to what we're doing here, but we are using a stack instead. Oh, well, well, there's a bunch of different ways you can find to, to solve it. All right, any questions on this one? Um, if you follow the pseudocode and follow my advice, you'll probably be able to solve, this one is, is a nice, easier one to do, and it's fairly fun, okay? Um, also the extra credit, I think I have it as way too much, way too less as five points. No, that should be should be equal to like ten points for extra credit. So, okay, all right. And with that.